Okay. Our example number four here is when three planes create a triangle prism. So again, this is an inconsistent system we're going to talk about. This is example four. That's a four. On nine point four. Okay. So again, they've given us three equations of planes: x minus y plus z equals one. X plus y plus two z gives us two. And x minus 5y minus z gives us 1. Okay? So, first thing we always do when checking these systems is check the normals. If the normals are the same, we have parallel lines, and then we know we're not going to go anywhere from there. So, we'll quickly check. Our very first normal is 1, negative 1, and 1. That should be a 1. Our second normal is 1, 1, 2. Okay, that's different from the first, so those aren't parallel. And our third normal is 1, negative 5, negative 1. Great. All three of our normals are different, which means we know we're not dealing with coincident planes or parallel planes. So these planes will intersect. The question is, will they intersect at a point, a line, or three different lines? Okay. Now, I've kind of given it away, but let's go through the process anyways. If, say, we didn't know, the first step would be is we're going to go through our process of elimination again. We're going to start to get rid of variables so that we can isolate to figure out if we can find a point for this or if it's just going to be a line. So I'm going to take equation one and compare it to equation two. That's our first step when we have three of them. We're going to use it to create a fourth equation. So equation one is x minus y plus z is equal to one. And equation 2, I'm just going to multiply it by negative 1. So we have x plus y. Thank you. Sorry, x minus. Ugh, negative x minus y. Forgot that we multiplied by negative 1. Minus z is. Minus 2z is equal to negative 2. It's really right clear. Okay. From there, we're going to equate our systems here. Our x's are going to give us 0x when we add them together. This will give us negative 2y. This will give us negative z. And is equal to negative 1. So equation 4 reads negative 2y minus z is equal to negative 1. That's our fourth equation. We then do the same idea with equation 1 and equation 3. We're going to eliminate our x in the two of those. So equation 1 x minus y plus z equals 1. And same idea, I'm going to multiply equation 3 also by negative 1. So that becomes negative x plus 5y plus z equals negative 1. We're going to add the two systems together. So we're left with 0x plus 4y plus 2z is equal to 0. 4y plus 2z is equal to 0. Good. OK? So we've now created a fourth and fifth equation. We're going to use those fourth and fifth equations to, again, eliminate another variable and see what we can come up with. OK? So I take equation 4, which is negative 2y actually I'm gonna multiply equation 4 just because I'm gonna to try to eliminate the y next okay I should have mentioned that first so because I want to eliminate my y and this one here is 4 I'm gonna multiply equation 4 by 2 so that has a coefficient in front of the y of the number 4 so when we multiply equation 4 by 2 we get negative 4y minus 2z is equal to negative 1 and we're just going to keep the same equation 5, which gives us 4y plus 2z is equal to 0. What's supposed to be negative 2? Oh, yes, it should be negative 2. Thank you.
We then go to add the two systems together. This is going to give us 0y plus 0z is equal to negative 2. Well, what this has then shown us is that there is no point where they're going to intersect. Because again, there's no value of y and z that's going to give us negative 2. So again, an inconsistent system. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try to figure out if we can find something out about where they do meet. Okay, so we have direction vectors for all three of these, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the normals of both and find lines that are perpendicular to these planes. So let's try to explain that a little easier. We have the normals, okay? So think of each plane in itself, and we'll try to draw a picture actually. Maybe this will help a little. So we have one plane, looks something like this. Another plane meets over here. And our third plane comes across. Let's talk about these planes. What happens from these planes, if this is our plane 2, plane 3, and plane 1, if you notice these lines here, okay, I want you to think of the normals of these planes. Okay? The normals of these planes, for instance, let's say we have normal of our first plane here. We'll put it in red. So a normal of the first plane would look like it might actually come directly at us. Okay? So let's extend it down a little. It would kind of come out like this. So we'll call that the first normal, the normal of plane one. And if you look at our second normal, or sorry, plane three's normal, we'll call this one. We'll do it in blue. Plane three's normal looks like it might go on an angle like that. And remember, these normals are perpendicular from the plane, so we're trying to create them. What's happening here is that these normals should create a perpendicular line. I know this one's hard to draw. A perpendicular line with where plane 3 and 1 meet. Okay? Which means we can find the direction vector for this line where they meet by finding the cross product of normal 1 and normal should be a 3 normal 3 okay and that is the case for all of the ones or all of the planes we have again here's our normal 1 we'll give this as normal 2 normal 2 will go in green something like that they should create perpendicular lines with our above line where the two planes meet. So that would be Rishi Bangaraja, please come to the main office. Rishi Bangaraja. So that perpendicular line would again give us where the two lines meet. So if we take normal three, sorry, normal two and normal one, and find the cross product of the two of them. we should be able to get the direction vector for this line just like we would from this line and then vice versa with the same idea here we'll just do it quickly that means normal two and normal three should also give us the direction vector from this line what we're gonna figure out okay, is if all of these lines are parallel these new directions okay, and we could have called them maybe m1 m2 and this third one, M3. If all of those vectors are parallel, we know that all three of these planes meet on different lines. In fact, there will be three separate answers to these. Okay, So we're going to take the normals from above and put them through the cross product to make sure that this is the case. If this isn't the case, either we've made a miscalculation or they all meet on possibly one line. So the normal for number one
was 1, negative 1, and 1. The normal for 2 was 1, 1, and 2. And the normal for 3 was 1, negative 5, negative 1. Okay. So we have our three normals here. And we're going to do the same idea. We're going to put them through the cross product. So if you guys remember this, normal 1, cross, we'll start with normal 2. Should be negative one. Check what you wrote down. Should be negative one. So we're going to take these normals. So remember that gives us, we'll call this our A and B for simplicity's sake as we go through this. So it should be A2 times A3, which gives us negative two. Subtract A3 times A, sorry, B2, which gives us negative one, so plus one. We then have A. 3 times B1, which gives us 1. A1 times B3, so subtract 2. And finally, A1 times B2 gives us 1. Subtract A2 times B1, which is negative 1, so it becomes a plus. So first one we get is negative 3, negative 1, 2. Is that right? Yep, we're good. We then do the same thing with normal 1 and normal 3. So same idea. We're going to take our, we'll do this one in blue so we can keep track of what we're doing here. A2 times B3, which is negative 1 times negative 1, so it gives us 1. Subtract A3 times B2. Subtract negative 5, so we're going to get plus 5. We then have A3 times B1, which gives us 1. Subtract A1 times B3, which gives us negative 1, so plus 1. And finally, we have A1 times B2, which gives us negative 5, times A2 times B1, so plus 1. So it gives us negative 1, but we're subtracting, so we add 1. Okay. We're then going to end up with 6, 2, and negative 4. Now, this may look different, but if I take out a factor of negative 2, so we take negative 2 out, we're left with negative 2 as a scalar and negative 3, negative 1, positive 2. So these two lines are parallel. The direction vectors from both of them are parallel. And all we have to do is confirm our third one has the same case. So vector or normal A2 cross normal 3. Same process. I know the lines underneath are getting a little confusing. At least for me they are. Uh, A2 times A B3. So that's 1 times negative 1 gives us negative 1. Subtract. A3 times B2, which gives us... Good morning, colleagues. Pardon the interruption. Just to let you know that... Okay, so just reiterate that. We already did A2 times B3. We're now doing A3, which is the number 2, times B2 is negative 5. So that gives us negative 10. Because we're subtracting, we're going to add it. We then do A3 times B1, which is 2 times 1 is 2. Subtract... B1 times A3, which is, no, we just did that. Other way around, A1 times B3. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, but we're subtracting, so we add 1. And finally, A1 times B2 gives us negative 5. Subtract A2 times B1, which is 1. We carry this out, we get 9. 3 and negative 6. And again, if we take out a factor of negative 2, we're left with 3, negative 3, thank you, negative 1, and positive 2. 
Oh yeah, not two. There we go. So, quite a bit of work. All that did is it proved that the three lines where the three planes intersect each other are all parallel. So because they're all parallel, that means we're going to get three different lines. And they're all scalar multiples of each other, these parallel lines. Okay. So that means we're going to have three different lines. Now, if I were to ask you where they actually intersect each other, your next step would be to compare planes one and two, find the line. Then compare planes one and three, find the line. And then compare planes two and three and find the line. This would be a very in-depth question if you're actually asked to find all three points where they intersect each other. Okay, so just reiterate that. We already did A2 times B3. We're now doing A3, which is the number 2, times B2 is negative 5. So that gives us negative 10. Because we're subtracting, we're going to add it. We then do A3 times B1, which is 2 times 1 is 2. Subtract B1 times A3, which is, no, we just did that. Other way around, A1 times B3. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, but we're subtracting, so we add 1. And finally, A1 times B2 gives us negative 5. Subtract A2 times B1, which is 1. We carry this out, we get 9, 3, and negative 6. And again, if we take out a factor of negative 2, we're left with 3, negative 3, thank you, negative 1, and positive 2. Oh, yeah, not 2. There we go. So, quite a bit of work. All that did is it proved that the three lines where the three planes intersect each other are all parallel. So because they're all parallel, that means we're going to get three different lines. And they're all scalar multiples of each other, these parallel lines. Okay. So that means we're going to have three different lines. Now, if I were to ask you where they actually intersect each other, your next step would be to compare planes 1 and 2, find the line. Then compare planes 1 and 3, find the line and then compare planes 2 and 3 and find the line. This would be a very in-depth question if you're actually asked to find all three points where they intersect each other.